Hello everyone. When I first started this channel, I soon realized a lot of you were new to modding or had never modded Skyrim before. And since most people when starting out jump straight into the big visual mods or complex overhauls, I wanted to make this video that will help guide you through the initial stages of modding and give you some recommendations of essential mods that will lay a good foundation before you start transforming your game from vanilla Skyrim into a heavily modded setup similar to this. But before we get into any of that, there's one thing that everyone must do, and I'd assume most of you already have, but you need to have actually launched your game at least once. So if you haven't already, launch Skyrim and start a new game so your computer actually knows Skyrim is installed and will create the necessary files. Also, while we are on the subject, it's recommended to install Skyrim outside of the Microsoft Program Files framework. This can easily be changed through Steam. For me, I have it installed straight onto one of my hard drives. Next, we need to know what version of Skyrim you have installed. To do this, simply go to your Skyrim game folder. For Steam, it's found in your Steam library, Steam apps, common, and then your Skyrim folder. Right click on the Skyrim application and select properties. Then go to the details tab and your game version will be right here. There are two major versions of Skyrim at the moment, version 1.6, which is referred to as Anniversary Edition or AE, and 1.5.97, referred to as Special Edition or SE. Most of you will likely be on the AE version of the game. It's important you remember what version of Skyrim you have and if you think you will forget, please write it down somewhere. I also want to touch on downgrading your Skyrim. As you can see, I am on version 1.5.97 because I have downgraded from the AE version. The main reason people downgrade their game is because there are a handful of mods that have not been updated to work with the latest version of Skyrim. Also, if Bethesda decides to update their game again, a number of mods will stop working and will need to be updated. Downgrading to Special Edition helps mitigate this issue. Although I do recommend downgrading, I'm not going to tell you to downgrade just because I have. It's totally up to you. Saying that, if you do want to downgrade, it's a very simple process. Just go to the Downgrade Patcher link in the description, navigate to the Files tab, and you want to manually download the Best of Both Worlds Downgrade Patcher. Once it's downloaded, just open the program and it should automatically find your game location. If it doesn't, simply press the browse and navigate to your Skyrim game folder. Then just click start patching and it should only take a few seconds to complete. When it does, it'll say finish patching, enjoy your game. And you have now successfully downgraded your game to 1.5.97. You can again just double check that your game has actually downgraded through the properties. So now you have the version of your game you want to start modding. You will need a mod manager. The two most popular mod managers are Mod Organizer 2, known as MO2, and Vortex. I recommend using MO2 and will be using it throughout this video, but if you do use Vortex, don't worry, all of these mods still work. I will also put a link in the description to a great video by Gamer Poets, who goes over how to install and set up Mod Organizer 2 if you haven't already. And the last thing before we get into the mods is installing the latest Microsoft Visual Studio, which is a requirement for a number of mods I will show you in this video. Just follow the link and select the Times 64 version, run the program and install to your computer. Okay, now that's all out of the way, let's get into modding Skyrim. The first mod I want to show you is called SKSE or Skyrim Script Extender, which increases the capabilities of Skyrim and is required by a large number of other mods. To install, follow the link in the description and download the correct version for your game. For AE users, you want the Anniversary Edition build, and for SE users, you want the Special Edition build. I'm using SE, so I will download the second one, but the process is the same. After it's downloaded, extract the files, and I recommend using 7-zip, which is free to download. Just right-click, go to 7-zip, and extract files. 
then simply copy and paste all of the files from the folder into your Skyrim game folder. Now when you open Mod Organizer 2, SKSE should automatically be recognized in this drop down menu. If it's not, just open the drop down menu and hit edit. Go to the plus symbol and choose add from file. Find the SKSE loader in your game folder and double click. You can rename it if you like, then hit apply and OK. Importantly, from now on, you must launch Skyrim through SKSE, not through Steam. To do this, simply select SKSE from the drop down menu and click run to launch Skyrim. As a side note, make sure Steam is open on your PC before launching SKSE. The first plugin or mod for SKSE I recommend getting is the SKSE address library as it is a requirement for most SKSE plugins. Here I will quickly go over how to install a mod through your mod manager. Go to the mod page and then the files tab. Again, find the correct version for your game and select the mod manager download button. As long as your Nexus account is properly linked to your mod manager, this will automatically show up in your downloads tab in MO2. Once it's downloaded, right click install and it will now show up on the left pane where all of your installed mods are displayed. Simply check the box to enable the mod or uncheck to disable. This is the very simple process for how you will download, install and enable most of the mods from Nexus. Next is what I consider an essential mod called SSC Engine Fixes, which will solve multiple issues with the Skyrim engine. Again, navigate to the Files tab and you will see this mod has two parts. Part 1 is installed through your mod manager. Simply download, install and enable like the last time, making sure to get the correct version. Part 2, you have to download manually, then extract the files and copy the three DLL files into your Skyrim game folder. The next mod is another important one, called Power of Threes Tweaks, which offers another collection of fixes. Simply download, install and enable the main file through your mod manager. Also, if this is your first time downloading, get the optional INI file as well. The main file does come with a faux mod, where you must select the correct version of Skyrim you are using. Next is a mod called SSC Display Tweaks, which includes a number of fixes including unlocking your frame rate. Again, just download and install through your mod manager. I also recommend getting the high performance configuration if you have a good monitor and PC setup. Then we have a mod called Skyrim Priority SEAE, which ensures Skyrim gets the most CPU usage to prevent sudden lag. Simply install through your mod manager. And next is a mod called SkyUI. This mod will overhaul the in-game user interface from the vanilla style into a more intuitive and PC friendly interface that looks like this. It is also required by a large amount of mods. Again, just download and install through your mod manager. The next mod I recommend is called MCM Helper. Often mods will have an in-game mod configuration menu where you can adjust the settings of those mods. This mod is a framework that simplifies and extends the function of those menus. Again, just install through your mod manager. Special edition users will need to scroll down to the old files to find the right version of the mod. Following that is a mod called Unofficial Skyrim Patch, which fixes a lot of bugs and many other mods also have this as a requirement. Simply download and install with your mod manager. If you have downgraded to Skyrim Special Edition 1.5.97, there is a separate link to an archived version of this mod you need to install instead, as the current version no longer supports SE. And finally, the last mod is called SSE Fixes, which is only available to people who have downgraded to Skyrim Special Edition 1.5.97. So do not download this if you are on AE. It helps remove a bug to increase your frame rate in game. There is one requirement called DLL plugin loader, which you have to install manually. First go to your Skyrim game folder and you will see 
a file called bank-w64.dll. Simply rename it so it now has an underscore after it like this. Then put the downloaded DLL file into your game folder like this. Now you can install SSE fixes through your mod manager. Remember this one is only for special edition users. Now I want to show you a couple of applications that will also help the performance of your game. First is an application called Beth INI or Bethany which will help you configure and optimize your Skyrim INI files. Simply manually download and extract the standalone version. I recommend making a folder somewhere easy to remember so you can come back if required. Then run the Bethany application and select Skyrim Special Edition in your game options. When it launches it will automatically detect your Skyrim folders for you and you can now adjust the settings as you like. I recommend picking a preset based on your PC performance and then ticking the recommended tweaks box. Then if you feel comfortable you can go through the different tabs to adjust settings as you like. For example in the visual tab you can adjust the density of your grass. When finished make sure to save and exit. And finally the last thing I want to show you today is called loot or load order optimization tool which will sort your mod load order for you so your game runs smoothly. Firstly, manually download the latest version of Loot for your operating system and then open the installer. You may get a pop-up from Windows Defender, simply run anyway and select your language then install to a folder easy to remember on your PC. Let it finish installing and if it automatically launches you can just close it. Now navigate back to Mod Organizer 2 and click the drop down menu then select edit. The executable configuration menu will open, just go to the plus symbol and select add from file. Now find where you just installed loot and double click the loot executable, then hit apply and ok. Now loot should have installed onto your mod organizer profile. Next select loot from the drop down menu and hit the run button to open it. In the top left corner Make sure Skyrim Special Edition is selected, then hit the update master list and then sort plugins. If the load order has changed, make sure to select apply sorted load order. Loot is also a great tool to tell you if your mods require any patches or should be cleaned. To see this just scroll down through your list. When starting out I recommend using loot to sort your load order whenever you install new mods. However as you become more experienced it is recommended to adjust your load order manually as loot doesn't always get it correct but this is something you will learn with time not just as you are starting out. And now let's recap some important information. On MO2 when you download a mod it will show up in the downloads tab. Right click the mod and select install. Then check the box in the left to enable it. When you have installed all of the mods you want, run loot and sort your load order. Click apply and exit out of loot. If you know what you are doing, you can rearrange your load order manually or you have been told on exactly what to do. I don't recommend doing this if you are just learning though. Then launch your Skyrim through the SKSE loader in your MO2 to play your modded version of Skyrim. And as a final note for this guide, make sure you read the entire description of every mod you download and make sure you have all of the requirements before downloading. This sounds very simple but will solve a lot of the issues you are having if you follow these instructions properly. And on that note is the end of this guide. When you now launch Skyrim with all of these mods and fixes installed, you should notice a better performance. But what you have actually done is set up a solid platform to start your modding journey. If you do want to find some mods to install, feel free to check out my channel for some ideas. Otherwise, thanks for watching, I hope it helped, and I will see you all again next time. Cheers.